Very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Boxing Day edition of Vogan's European Outlook. It is Tuesday the 26th of December and boy oh boy we have some very interesting things to come. It looks as if the uh, models are bringing us a bit of a Christmas present in itself with regards to what they're cooking up for the early new year. And for winter weather lovers like myself and many of you that watch this channel it looks as if more and more model members are trying to pr pr produce a, a major sudden stratospheric warming into the new year. And then if things come together, uh, we could see two weeks later down the road the response to that, uh, hopefully over Western Europe and eastern portions of North America. So this is the latest GFS run for the 10 HPA temperatures and you've got that strong warming taking place over the Eurasia side of the pole and as you can see the very strong warm warming now then starts to drift across and over top of the pole forcing the displacement of the polar vortex some members split the vortex other members like this one displaces it further south nonetheless this in my opinion would constitute a major SSW and this is actually by Thursday the 4th of January You've got those very anomalous warm temperatures at the, the 10 millibar level now crossing right over the top of the uh, of the North Pole. And this is certainly very fascinating stuff indeed. Speaking of other fascinating things, this is the GEFS. This is the extended ensemble. So the ensemble being, you know, all the members run together to produce one um, trend uh, so to speak here and you can see that as we progress through the period we've got this increase in cold spreading across northern and western portions of Europe through the middle and second half of January and this may be because the model is indicating that sudden stratospheric warming um, coupling with the troposphere and providing the cold um, within the 500 millibar pattern so there is some increasing cross model consensus indicating that not only we get a major SSW develop within the first 10 days of January and but then you know 10 to 14 days after that we have the a very significant increase in chance of seeing colder conditions through the middle and second half of January so very interesting times to come in the near term We've got Storm Garrett. We'll look at that in just a second. But while temperatures reached 13.6 Celsius yesterday afternoon, the warmest in the UK for Christmas Day since 2016, we did see snow in the northern half of the British Isles. This was a scene from Aviemore later last night. Even at this general area, we did have uh, very icy conditions, temperatures uh, slightly below the freezing mark as we edge towards midnight and into early boxing day and this was the temperature profile across the uk so sub-zero from the central and southern highlands northwards from the central belt southwards we were clinging on to temperatures of plus eight even upwards of plus 11 and 12 across the southeast coast of the uk so it was a very distinct contrast on christmas day with regards to the temperatures and um let me know in the comment section below, did you have a mild Christmas or did you have a white Christmas? This was the temperature on Christmas Eve, 15.3 at Heathrow. That is the warmest for the UK since 1997. It did happen to capture these um, nacreous clouds or polar stratospheric clouds on our way to the Panto and Inverness uh, later on Christmas Eve. So it uh, did happen to see some pretty, uh, pretty beautiful rainbow clouds in the sky representing the core of the polar vortex overhead so i thought i would show you um, my latest images that uh, i happened to capture myself but uh, it looks also as if so that we had the 13.6 celsius as a maximum at extra airport but we also recorded an, uh, a minimum temperature this is a pr potentially a preliminary record for the warmest start to a christmas day on record for the UK, a low of 12.4 Celsius. I don't know what the temperature dropped off below. Did it drop below that uh, that that level before midnight last night, which would then probably rule out that potential record. 
But you get yourself over the, the near continent, we had some ridiculous warmth as well. Temperatures in Austria, upwards of 18.6 Celsius at Vienna, close to the national record for this day. So this was on Christmas Day, temperatures as high as, uh, as 18.6. The, the national record for Austria on Christmas Day is 19.1 Celsius. And we had more ridiculous warmth over parts of many parts, in fact, of uh, of North America. So you can see here, this is a northern hemispheric view during Christmas Eve. And we had the core of coldest air over the heart of the Greenland ice cap, northern portions of Europe. But very, very warm conditions, a bit of a blowtorch actually over the Great Lakes of North America here and, and central and southern Europe, the southern UK, very warm conditions. Uh, you know, Christmas Eve into Christmas Day itself. And, uh, you know, we, we did see plenty of other warm conditions. Uh, it also looks as if it's had the least uh, snowy, for the snow, to for the, I'll get there, <laughs> the least snowiest season to date in the US. So the reds represent below average snow. And it has been incredibly mild across the, the United States during the month of December so far, and it will continue to be the case. But it looks as if with this major sudden stratospheric warming potential increase, and we could see some very dramatic temperature changes coming up. This was the uh, temperatures in northern Italy, uh, four stations of plus 25 Celsius in the Piedmont area. Um, so just remarkable warmth for this time of the year. But in stark contrast to that, Beijing, the capital of China, has seen a temperature below zero for 327 consecutive hours. This sets a record for the longest period of continuous temperatures at or below freezing for the month of December. We also seen record snowfall and record cold temperatures here uh, in Japan. So where is the coldest anywhere in the middle latitudes of the northern hemisphere? It's over eastern China, the Koreas and Japan at this moment in time, uh, a lack of cold conditions across uh, the majority of the rest of the Northern Hemisphere, Middle Latitude region here. So uh, just thought I'd give you a little bit of a, a tour of what's been taking place around the Christmas Eve, the Boxing Day period elsewhere. Now, this was the sharp contrast. This is going back to the 23rd of December, actually, but you can see the sharp contrast even over the UK. The North and East Highlands below uh, average temperatures, but the West Highlands southwards warmer than average. A very, very marked contrast here between the North and Northeastern UK versus the rest of the British Isles and the rest of Europe actually away from Scandinavia. Also con uh, temperatures as high as a remarkable 22.3 Celsius uh, with elevation over parts of Switzerland, thanks to very strong fern effect. So very strong fern effect winds uh, constituting unusually warm conditions here. So anyway, what is going on at the moment? This is the current pressure chart over Europe. And we're in a bit of a lull at the moment here. So we've had low pressure, we've had rain, we've had snow, mild conditions. Uh, the continuation of this very, very wet December overall. But we've got a slight break for a period of the next six hours or so but we have got storm garrett moving in from a southwesterly direction colder in place is going to create an interesting scenario for the course of tomorrow heavy gusty winds heavy rainfall but also very significant snow especially two three hundred meters above sea level during the course of tomorrow so we'll need to monitor that situation quite carefully but this is the pressure chart this is the current temperatures and you can see generally a mild theme to the uh, south of Scandinavia, the southern half of the UK, even holding on to relatively mild conditions, and then right the way across Europe. This was the temperatures uh, during the course of Christmas Day itself, so very, very mild temperatures across the majority of England, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland, right the way across the heart of Europe. You have to go up into Scandinavia and Western Russia to see anything particularly cold. Current temperatures at uh, what five to six in the evening this is across the uk this was christmas day by the way and temperatures say uh, only two three celsius across the north but we had uh, 12 even 13 celsius 
in the far south of the UK here. So I'm sure folks that are winter weather lovers, uh, snowmantics was probably a little bit jealous if you lived in, uh, you know, anywhere from the central belt southwards at some of the scenes that we were seeing across the north of the UK during the course, particularly last night, actually. This is the current temperatures as of uh, just before six o'clock here. Some fairly cold conditions, actually. We've got a temperature of minus 4.6 at Killer Bridge. We've got the uh, minus two at Aviemore, minus six at nearby Kern Gordon Summit. But then get yourself further south and we're still holding on close to double figures across parts of Devon, Cornwall in the Somerset. Uh, cool conditions across Northern Ireland as well. But uh, Storm Garrett is moving in from a south to southwesterly direction, named by the UK Met Office. You can see the system moving in, bumping into the cold air. So we're going to see heavy snowfall breaking out anywhere from possibly the Snowdonia area of northwest Wales up into uh, Cumbria, Northumberland, high elevations of southern and central Scotland. And then uh, obviously further north, you've got the uh, heavy snowfall breaking out as well. Could have blizzard conditions. 50, 60 mile per hour winds uh, fairly widely, especially in exposure or over high ground, but very messy conditions. A very nasty day to come tomorrow, actually, with the strong combination of the strong winds, heavy rainfall and heavy hill snow as well. Even moderate hills could see a decent covering of 5 to 10 centimetres, even locally 20 centimetres over the highest hills. But this is a frame from 12 o'clock UTC tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday the 27th. And you've got a deep area of low pressure at 974 millibars, close to the outer Hebrides here. To the east of the centre, we've got strong south to southeasterly winds here. In the southern flank of the low, we've got strong westerly winds. We've got multiple centres, actually, if you notice here. The main parent low itself is close to uh, Lewis and Harris. But we've got two other centres of low pressure to the south of the main centre. But very, very messy conditions across the British Isles. And we've got an associated cold front moving across uh, the rest of the UK, northern France, even into parts of Iberia during the course of late tomorrow and into Thursday itself. That area of low pressure then kind of spins off. But then we've got the redevelopment of a new low to the west. As you can see, more messy conditions, blustery westerly winds, heavy showers, hail, even thunder associated with that as well. As we continue to play through the loop, you can see another system then moving in off the Atlantic towards the weekend. That could pose another threat. We've got the pressure dropping to 973 millibars on approach to the northwest of Ireland, Northern Ireland. More heavy snowfall as cold air is in place here. More heavy rain to speak about as well. We've got very saturated ground up and down the land. So that is going to cause issues with localised flooding, of course. And the overall emphasis will be on an unsettled theme as we move towards the new year. But notice here that we start to see, according to the ECMWF anyway, higher pressure moving in. So we could actually have quite a frosty start to 2024. You can see here, if we look at the uh, 850 temperatures here, that could be quite a chilly start to uh, w when the bells arrive. Um, so if we look at the 850 temperatures, we've got fairly cold there in place with clear skies, light winds. And do we have much in the way of snow cover? Yeah, the ECMWF certainly prints out a significant amount of snow. This, by the way, could be one of the coldest New Year's if this was to happen. This is still a wee while away. But if this was to remotely happen, with clear skies, light winds, and snow-covered ground, we could easily drop in the uh, double figures below freezing if that was to materialise here. So let's have a look and see a close-up of the UK snow cover over the next several days here and see what the model is suggesting here. So play through the loop. You've got the high-elevation snow that increases significantly during the course of tomorrow, as you can see. Even low levels can see snow. Northern England and much of Scotland, it looks as if Northern Ireland is going to miss out. Parts of the western side of Ireland may see a skiff to snow. But that snow cover kind of remains in place. The reason why is we kind of hold on to this colder over the British Isles through the, the, the rest of this week and on into the weekend here. But then as we move into the new year itself, you can see that the model is indicating some very significant snow amounts 
across more southern ports.